Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today's video is going to be a little bonus one. This is not the type of content that you originally subscribed to me for. This video is not going to be educational. It's not going to be about sewing. Instead, I'm going to be doing my hair and makeup, but I'm not really going to talk you through the process of that because I have a recent tutorial on that, which I will link up above. Instead, I'm going to be doing a 1940s style look and just talking about random things. I really wanted to do a video at the start of this year where I talked about 2017 and why I was so unhappy with how it went, but I didn't really have the confidence to do that because I'm so bad at sitting down and talking about something with no reference points or things to hold. So I'm gonna try and do this while I apply makeup and I'm also gonna answer some questions I got on Instagram. And hopefully this will be enjoyable for those of you that want to know a little bit more about me. So I curled my hair last night and I curled it so the foam was on the bottom of the hair as opposed to the top like I showed in my original tutorial. But I don't think it makes that much of a difference. We'll see if it does today. Put on some moisturizer and then we can chat while this sinks in. <laughs> Beautiful. So let's talk about 2017. Uh, I said on my blog that I wasn't going to do a wrap-up post and that's because this year did not go particularly well for me. I guess it did in some ways, but it was not a year that I'm going to look back positively on. And the reason I didn't want to write about it is because I knew when I was talking about the bad parts of it, I would edit it down to a point where it was no longer really genuine. Whereas with a video, you only have the footage that you filmed. You can't continually go back and add to it and make it fit your narrative in that way. Um, and this was more of an emotionally bad thing, so I just kind of wanted to chat about it, uh, because I feel like it's important to get this stuff out there, because part of what made me feel so bad about this year was seeing other people being incredibly successful in all of their positive experiences, and those just made my bad ones feel even worse. So some really good stuff happened in 2017. I started my partnership with McCall's, I was featured in the New York Post, um... But for those really cool opportunities, there were dozens, if not hundreds, that slipped through my fingers. And I don't think people on social media really talk about the failed things that they get contacted about. And this is nothing new. I've been getting emails and had phone interviews for things that haven't worked out for as long as I've been posting on social media. I think it's just part of the territory. But I've never really cared about those opportunities I was presented with. So when they didn't work out, it didn't affect me that much, but this year I was approached with what was basically my dream job and I interviewed for it and I was told that I got it, that I was going to be part of it. And I was continuing to be told that in emails following that interview. And I was so excited and so ready to drop everything at a moment's notice for this job. Then I think four months later, I was informed they had hired someone else and that they didn't have really enough budget or time for me to be involved in the project. And this was devastating to me. I went into that interview very prepared to be told that I didn't have enough experience for the job. You know, I was ready for that, and I was viewing this as a positive learning experience regardless of the outcome. And it was a learning experience despite the outcome. Um, but I wasn't expecting to have it go that well and then to have such kind of a sad end. And the real issue was that it was so drawn out. Like I feel like it was dangled in front of me for months and I didn't really want to commit to anything else because I was so ready for it. And because of that, I just did not get a lot done for the first half of this year. When it finally fell through, I was sort of prepared for it to fall through, but it still, to actually get the confirmation of it really sucked. And by that point, this had dragged on for so long that everyone around me was kind of sick of hearing about it, but it still really meant a lot to me and having it not work out, it just, it was really, really awful. And I know that happens and that's what job hunting is. You know, it's a lot of people saying no to you, but to have someone reach out to me and then to have it fall through, it really made me question my future because if I can't even get a job with someone who is familiar and excited about my work, how on earth am I going to be successful when I'm the one approaching them and they don't know who I am and I'm competing with dozens if not hundreds of other applicants. And then I would go online and I would look and see everyone else and all of the cool things they were doing and it would just make me feel worse about myself. And I think on social media you're so concerned with presenting this perfect image that you only see the best bits of everyone else's life and it makes you feel awful about bits that aren't the best of yours. So realistically, for every opportunity I saw other people getting, they probably had a hundred failed things behind that too. They just weren't publicizing them. There were a couple things after the big break that failed that I was really excited about too and never heard back from the people about after they initially contacted me. And it got to a point where I would get excited and then I would get mad at myself for getting excited because I knew it wasn't gonna go anywhere. 
And every sort of opportunity I got following that just kind of confirmed those emotions more. And that's a really depressing mindset to be in. And it really, really negatively affected me. And I think a lot of go p- people go through that and are in a similar position to me where they don't want to talk about it because they don't want people to know that they've failed at something, even if there really isn't anything they could do in that situation to make it successful. And I think this is a big issue with social media. A lot of people don't take it very seriously and don't take the people that utilize it very seriously. So they have no qualms about contacting people randomly with no real intention of moving forward and working with them. It's so discouraging as a creator and a person. And then on top of that, YouTube has had a lot of problems this year. I didn't personally suffer from adpocalypse, I think because my ad revenue is already so low, but I've definitely suffered from other changes they've made, especially their current policy of reviewing videos. A lot of mine have been demonetized immediately after upload, causing me to lose out on most earnings. And even in the beginning of 2017, I was starting to see changes in my view count, and it was difficult to try and find motivation to film and edit when I didn't feel like there was really a way to be successful on the platform. But I'm back at it now, and I think that's partially to thanks for 2017. Just feeling so negative about my experiences with other people and the reliability of them, I realized one person who can be reliable is me. And I can be responsible for what I do and what I put out there and I can put out more content and I can start a Patreon and I can try and make this successful. So I guess in some ways like I'd hoped it would be it was a learning experience that's going to have a positive impact on me but it definitely didn't have a positive impact on me in the moment. It was incredibly discouraging in the moment. <laughs> so that failed opportunity and all the ones that followed them while seeing everyone else being successful online was really what just devastated me last year. But I'm feeling a lot better now and a lot more positive. Hopefully I seem better and more positive. I'm sure I'll have my good days and bad days because I always have, but as a whole, January has been a lot better for me than the entirety of 2017. As some of you may know, my pattern with McCall's has come out. This is my first pattern, and from what I've been told, it's been styling really well, which is awesome because I was kind of scared no one would buy it. And my reaction video that I put out went over really well. Once again, I wasn't expecting that to go that positively. I thought people would sort of hate on me for, I guess, trying to be profitable. <laughs> um, but everyone seemed really excited about it and as enthusiastic as I was. And that is so awesome to see. I don't talk about it a lot, but I, I'm so incredibly happy with the people who follow me. I feel like I have a really solid group that want to see me succeed and want to see me be happy and a lot of other people don't have that luxury so I'm incredibly grateful for that and seeing everyone's support on that video really solidified that in my mind once again. In January I've also been filming a lot. I implemented this plan where I reward myself a little bit of money every time I finish a video and get one edited and that has made all of the difference. In 2017 I was really indifferent towards doing videos because I didn't see a lot of benefit from them. Sometimes my videos will become profitable in the first year, but usually they don't. Usually they'll make like $5 a month. And when you view that over a two or three year period, that isn't insignificant, but at the time it feels pretty insignificant. Uh, so just giving myself a little reward for filming a video and having that immediate positive reaction when I finish editing has made all the difference. I've gotten so much done this month, it's been great. I've also made a couple things. I made the 1950s dress and swing coat, and I made 1940s dress, which is what I'm going to be modeling today. And then yesterday I started on a chemise. And yeah, I, I haven't gotten quite as much done in January as I wanted, but I think it's been a good start to the new year. What else have I done in January? I've also redone my room. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy with it. I think I'm gonna do a video all about it. I was really unhappy with that space and I felt like that was, it was so upsetting for me to be unhappy with that space since I spend so much of my life in there. So I gave it a little bit of a makeover with some eBay finds and yeah, I'm really, really pleased with how it turned out. I've been going up there to edit and just to have like a calm space to get some work done and it's been fantastic. So I'm so glad I decided to do that. And I think this week I'm going to get started on my first patron project. So let me actually find the question about Patreon. Chris and Tina asked if they could hear more about the Patreon that I mentioned a couple times. So I don't actually have this set up yet. And if you're unfamiliar with it, Patreon is basically a monthly funding site where you can contribute to creators and get early access to content as well as exclusive content. So I'm going to launch this hopefully in February. I want to get enough content built up that I can be on a monthly schedule 
school and I haven't done that yet so it'll probably be mid or at the end of February but I have been working on content for the launch for two or three months now. Uh, so my plan is to do monthly patterns through the decades project which I touched on in my haul video. So I have patterns from every decade of the 20th century. I'm, not, I'm going to complete at least one a month. People on Patreon are going to get early access to that video and they will also get exclusive access to a behind the scenes vlog. I'm also planning on doing a lot more casual content on Patreon like this or like a daily vlog or a day in the life or a uh, work in progress Wednesday. So just shorter five or ten minute videos that I can upload on a more regular basis. So yeah, that's gonna be fun. I'm not sure what other rewards I can do. If you have any ideas, please let me know. I don't really have a lot of fancy prints or anything. I was thinking of doing postcard prints because that would be really cheap to mail. And if this becomes successful enough, I could do a lot more exclusive content for it. It's just I don't want to lose the AdSense revenue that I get from uploading videos publicly on YouTube unless Patreon ends up working out, if that makes sense. So there might be less exclusive content to begin with, and then if it works out, I can kind of ramp it up over time. I'm gonna do this off camera because these are not coming out the right shape at all. Elfqueen90 asked if I'd move to another state slash country to pursue a career in costume making. I definitely would. In fact, I feel like I kind of have to because Long Island is so expensive and so rural. It's basically two hours of public transport to get in and out of New York City from where I live now. So if I wanted to have an internship there, it would be overwhelmingly long days and I don't know if I could actually do that. I think I would probably have to get an apartment closer to the city. As far as if I had ever moved to a different state or country, I would love to. I feel like there's a lot more respect for theater in Europe. So I think it would be absolutely fantastic to have the opportunity to work there. I, I definitely see myself leaving New York at some point in the future, just because the cost of living is so high here. And it's basically working in the city or not working at all. And I'm not really a city person. I think I would struggle a lot uh, living even 60 miles closer to New York City, much less in the city itself. So if I get a job at a theater in a smaller city or where there's a rural area more adjacent to the city, I think I would do a lot better. That is part of the reason that I didn't really pursue internships in the way that I originally intended to because I realized the public transport to do it in New York City was going to be way too much and moving isn't something that I feel ready for right now, even though it is something I envision myself doing in the future. I didn't go to college, so I've never really had that away from home but with a safety net type experience, which makes being away from home without a safety net really terrifying. I also really don't want to leave my dog, which sounds super childish, but I love her to bits and pieces and I don't really want to be away from her because she's my best friend. JD Kins, who has been following me forever, uh, she's like an original follower right there, uh, asked if I have any crafty hobbies outside of sewing and what are my favorite YouTubers. I don't really have any hobbies outside of sewing except uh, like video games, if that counts. And I also really like antiquing and browsing eBay, but I don't think those count. So I guess that's a no. I don't really have any crafty hobbies outside of sewing. And she also asked what my favorite YouTubers are. I follow a lot of like the English beauty YouTubers just because I'm constantly hand sewing and it's nice having that on in the background. Uh, but the ones I really look forward to videos from are like Jenna Marbles or weird aquarium channels like Solid Gold Aquatics and Serpa Designs. I just find those videos really calming to watch. Am I ever going to build a sump for a 150 gallon aquarium? No, but every time I see them upload, I'm like, yes, this is just gonna be 20 minutes of relaxing me time. And for the past probably two years now, I've been a really big fan of Game Grumps. I go back and watch their old versus episodes all the time when I'm in a bad mood and it's just like, a little piece of happiness that perks me up. So the other question by It's Chair that I totally skipped over is do you ever see yourself having your own clothing line? And the answer to that is no. If I got the opportunity to design for a clothing company, especially if they did vintage themed apparel, that would be awesome. But I don't think that is something that I would go out and try and pursue on my own. Another fashion related question was by Griffin Bree, and that's have you always been interested in 1940s slash 50s fashion and where do you purchase your vintage clothing? I currently don't own any vintage clothing, but I have ordered quite a bit of it on Etsy. I've been really wanting to kind of transform my style a little bit more in that direction because I feel like it suits me really well and I never feel more confident than when I'm wearing that style. So yeah, I'm re really, really excited about the pieces I've ordered and I'm probably gonna continue to order pieces until I have like a solid few outfits. Um, and I would love to do videos about that too, but I don't know if anyone would care. So if you'd care, then let me know and I will try and make it happen. But also, you know how in my ma last makeup video is like, this mascara is gross, I really need to get a new one. It's still here and it's still gross. That should be my Instagram bio. <laughs> so accurate. 
I have actually ordered new mascara, it just isn't here yet, so I'm holding on to this for a little longer. Sophia Menijas, Menijas asked, what did you want to be when you were a child and have your parents always supported your career goals? Yes, my parents are very supportive. I talk more about that in my first Q&A. Actually, a lot of the questions I got were answered in my first Q&A, so I will link that either up here or in the description box if you want to hear more about it. As far as what I want to be when I was younger, I actually wanted to own a dog kennel, and I had this totally planned out. I was obsessed with dogs when I was younger. I showed dogs, I knew all the breeds, I was absolutely in love with them. Dogs were the best thing in the world to me. So I went to own a dog kennel where the dogs boarded there, would get at least an hour of human interaction and outdoor time every day, and I would do like layouts for the dog kennels and everything I would need for them and startup costs. And I was like six and I had this Pet Edge magazine that I would flip through and figure out the cost for everything. And I was so excited about this future plan. But I don't do that well with poop and vomit and loud noises. And those are all things you have to deal with when you have a lot of dogs around. So I don't think that is something that will happen for me in the future. But I do still love dogs and I love having a dog. So there's that. Natasha Rose asked, what is something we probably don't know about you? I have a scar on my finger, which you've probably seen in videos before. Here, let's do this. And I don't have any feeling in this finger because I cut the nerve with the seam ripper when I was eight uh, and had to get stitches. And I actually did that on New Year's Eve, which was super fun. So yeah, this finger, I mean, it moves and everything, but it feels kind of fuzzy and odd when I touch the tip of it. And it also doesn't get wrinkly when it gets wet because that's actually a reaction in the nerves. So I can be in the bath for like an hour and all the other fingertips will be wrinkly and this one won't be. One that came up twice was by Callie Drew and Rebecca Mew. And it was, can you talk more about your homeschool journey? So for those of you that don't know, I was homeschooled from second grade up until I was 16, which is when I went out of state to take the GED exam and ended up getting my general education diploma, which is equivalent to a high school diploma. And boy, was that an experience. I took it in this really rural town where everyone was driving on the roads on quad bikes, waiting on street corners, and there were these beautiful historic buildings right next to these ones that had been completely abandoned and were falling apart. And in my class, there's someone that had to sit in a specific chair because it was right next to an outlet so they could charge their ankle bracelet while they were taking the test. So yeah, that was an experience. But anyway, I was homeschooled from second grade up until I was 16 years old. So I'm very, very grateful that I was homeschooled. I don't think I'd be here today without it just because I'm a very creative person and I feel like public schools kind of stifle that. Being creative and working on projects is a big part of how I deal with my anxiety. I think that would have been a much more severe problem in my teenage years if I hadn't been homeschooled. And I think it probably would have um, turned into depression and just like bad thoughts. I'm also very much an introvert and I find it really exhausting being around large groups of people. And I've always been like that. I can deal with it, it doesn't stress me out. But by the end of the day, I am just pooped. Like I used to go to anime conventions and I would get there at maybe nine o'clock and by four o'clock I was just done. Like I didn't want to be around people anymore. I was tired. I didn't want to go out for dinner with people. I just wanted to sit in my hotel room and watch YouTube videos. And it's not that I don't like people or that I'm bad with dealing with people and talking to people. It's just that being around a lot of them for long periods exhausts me. So I don't think school would have been a good environment for me, especially with all the social constructs and everything. I was also very, very self-conscious between the ages of probably 12 and 18. Like I simultaneously hated myself and thought I was hot shit, but basically I really searched for validation in my looks in other people. And since I didn't have a lot of friends and didn't have a large dating pool since I was part of a small homeschool group, I basically searched for that online and posted a lot of pictures of myself and comments about me being pretty were like the end all be all of things. That was all I wanted. And now I feel a little bit differently because there are just things that you can't control about your appearance. And as I came to terms with those things, I realized it's a lot more important to be a nice person and to work on your skill set and to be proud of those abilities and to want people to recognize those as opposed to how pretty your face looks. I got super off topic there, but basically what I was gonna say is that um, I think if I'd been in a place where I could get that validation, not just from people online, but from people around me, I might have done some things that I regret now. So I'm very, very grateful for the fact that I was homeschooled. Unlike a lot of people, I don't think it is difficult to make friends in the homeschool community if you're part of a group. They're usually one or two dozen or three dozen people near your age and there's a good chance that you're gonna have some stuff in common with one of those people and end up becoming friends, but there isn't that forced closeness that you get with school. So even with my best friend, I was only seeing them 
maybe three times or four times a month, which isn't a lot compared to people that see their friends daily. And that also meant that keeping up with them was largely dependent on me um, in using social media. And if we had a falling out on social media, that basically destroys the relationship because you don't have that forced contact, which causes you to resolve things in person. So a lot of the friendships that I did have in the homeschool community are gone now just because something happened and it wasn't that big of a deal, but there wasn't really a chance to repair it. My other really big qualm with being homeschooled is that it gives you a skewed perception of your own intelligence. And I think this can go either way. It can make you feel really smart or it can make you feel really stupid. And for me, it made me feel really stupid. So it was me and my brother and then we were being taught by our parents. And that was really, really hard because my brother is an incredibly smart intellectual person who picks up information very quickly. And I'm not, I don't think I'm stupid, but I definitely didn't pick things up as quickly as him. So growing up, I was comparing myself to this person who's probably in the top 0.5% of all students. And I was probably more like in the top 20%. And it just made me feel so stupid. And feeling that stupid for that long is not really a good thing for your self-confidence. And I think that was probably part of what made me so concerned and focused on my looks when I was in my teenage years because I didn't feel like there was anything else to me because um, I certainly wasn't as smart as him. And now I realize that it's not so much about intelligence. It's more that I learn differently. And I don't feel like the curriculum we used really lent itself well to me and my mindset, which probably led to me picking up things at a slower rate or not picking them up at all. So now I feel feel a little bit better about myself, but that definitely took a, a toll on me, always being the worst in my class because there was a class size of two. All right, let's get to brushing out this do. I wanna do a 1940s style today. I'm not even sure what 1940s styles are. Let me, let me Google some stuff really quickly. I feel like I need to cut my hair. My hair just isn't quite long enough for all of this. But, but we'll see, we'll see what we can do. Last time you guys really liked the sound of me brushing my hair, which I thought was funny because I thought people were going to go crazy because it sounds like the hairs are breaking, but they're not, that's just how this brush sounds. That looks kind of right. Yeah, that, that's something, kind of. How did they get it to look like that? Like, I don't have enough hair to accomplish this. How is my hair too long, yet I simultaneously don't have enough hair to do this? What were they putting in the water in the 1940s? Yeah, this is what we want. This is the look. Oh, look at that curly thing. Though how is there's like curly, like it's into this little roll, but it also has all this volume. Like That's some serious sorcery right there. I totally had a curler in and no one told me. I need a bigger mirror for a second, but I, I will be back to help figure this out. Guys, I think this is it. I think this is what we want. Um, I am also gonna put a hat on top of this and I don't, don't really know how that's gonna go. Maybe like that. Maybe like that. I'm going to take some of the curl shaping gel and just use that to smooth down the sides. What if I did an updo? Oh, I think that looks so much cuter. I'm gonna leave it like this and then we can just put this right here. That's so cute. I'm gonna cut this footage. We're gonna come back. It's gonna be a slightly different angle, but I will have the entire ensemble on and this video will be done. Never mind, I lied. I'm back again. I forgot lipstick. All right, so the lipstick I'm using today is going to be by Besame or Besame. I'm not sure which one it is. And I have the color 1930, which is a really deep dark brownish red, and then the color 1946, which is a brighter kind of orange red. So I'm going to combine these two and I'm probably gonna have to use a lip brush for part of it. These are the cutest, tiniest little lipsticks. Like at first I was disappointed at how tiny they are because I bought a little sampler set. 
but now I just think they're adorable. Like, look at this little guy. Imagine if everything in the world was this small and I was this size. I would have an even harder time trying to find a boyfriend. <laughs> These are really hard to apply straight from the bullet, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a little lip brush. I don't have a lip liner, uh, so that's why I'm not using that. All right, so that is it for this look. Without the hat, I'm gonna put the hat on, the costume, and then I will be back. Now I am all dolled up. I've got my hat on, I've got my earrings on, I've got my shoulder pads. I feel slightly uncomfortable, but also ready to take some photos of this dress. If you're interested in hearing more about the costume, I do have a video on it, which I will link up here as well as in the description box. Um, and thank you for getting through this with me. I hope you enjoyed seeing me try and style my hair and apply some makeup. Um, and also enjoyed the little chit chat bits I inserted in between. I realize this is a very different type of video for my channel and it's not a type of video I plan on making a habit of making. Uh, but it was important to me to talk about some of this stuff and to let you guys get to know me a little bit better. Because I think seeing the best parts of everyone's life can make you feel really crap about yours. And I realized that I was probably contributing to the problem with the stuff that I put out. So I wanted to make a video that was a little bit more honest and helped you get to know me a little bit better and hopefully makes you feel better about yourself, you know? Because I think there are probably a lot of people out there that are trying to succeed at social media or at life that have similar feelings that I did and it's nice knowing that you aren't alone. So I'm gonna end it here. Thank you so so much for watching um, and I will talk to all of you guys soon with a more normal, less depressing, much more upbeat sewing related video. So thanks again for watching and I shall talk to you soon!